Sí, sí, yo. Allah, 
إن كنت لم يقل إن أحببتم الله إنما قال إن كنت If your love for Allah is true follow me obey me لا يؤمن أحدكم سيس رسول الله حتى يكون هواه تبعا لما جئت به None of you will truly be a believer until their desire obeys what I have come with. حتى يكون هواه تبعا لما جئت به. The ulama calls call this ayah the ayah of test for anyone who claims the law of Allah. Your actions, your behavior, your way of life will either prove it or disapprove it, will either confirm it or <coughs> say no, say no, no, you're just claiming that you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For loving Allah results in obeying Rasulullah. But loving Allah is actually loving Rasulullah. You cannot separate the love of Allah from the love of Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Surah Tawbah, Allah tells us, Wallahu wa Rasuluhu ahakku an yurduhu lam yaj'al al-dhamira muhannan innama wahid al-dhamira he did not say, Allah and His Messenger are worthier for you to please them. He says, Allah and His Messenger is worthier, deserves more than anyone else for you to please. Because loving Allah is loving Rasulullah. Allah says, if you are truly a lover of Allah, you must obey Rasulullah. And obeying Rasulullah is obeying Allah Himself. Man yuqi'i rasula faqad ata'a Allah. Wa man tawalla fama arsalnaka alayhim wakila. Says Allah in Surah al Nisa. Whoever obeys the Prophet has obeyed Allah. Has verily, indeed, he used. وما أرسلنا من رسول إلا ليطاع إلا ليطاع بإذن الله قل إن كنتم تحبون الله فاتبعوا دعاية التست وإن تطيعوه تهتدوا if you follow him if you obey him you shall be guided why I have often this khutbah with Ayah. The ayah of love. And we are in the month of Sayyidina Rasulullah. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, Al Bakhilu man dukirtu indahu adam yusadbi alayya. In the presence of whom my name was mentioned, and he did not pray upon me. The month is in which he was born. When this month comes, generally Muslims of today are <coughs> divided into two categories. Some who say we must celebrate the birth of Rasulullah. Some who say no, celebration of the birth of Rasulullah is bid'ah. This is not a new difference amongst the scholars. But whenever the month arrives, we find ourselves debating over the permissibility and the non permissibility of celebration. Some even claim that there is no proof that the Prophet was born on <coughs> September the 12th. But there is ijma' consensus 
That means all the scholars agree upon the fact that he died on Rabi'ul Awal the, the 12th. That is very wrong. And the reason we believe that nowadays is the fact that we are an ummah that does not read anymore. <laughs> there is no consensus at all that the Prophet Sallallahu died on Rabi al Awal the 12th. If you go back to the books of Sira, we will know that <coughs> there is no way, no way, Sayyidina Rasulullah Sallallahu could die on Rabi al Awal the 12th. If you read the book of Ibn Sa'd Sahib al Tabaqat, talking about or bringing up the sayings of the scholars about the very day the Prophet Sallallahu died, the first saying he brought was that he died on the second. Ibn Sa'd Sahib al Tabaqat. وطالب العلم لا يكون طالب للعلم إن لم يقرأ به سعد بطبقاته. No student of knowledge can be student of knowledge if they do not read طبقات أبي سعد. ابن حجر العسقلاني in his فتح and again no seek of knowledge can be serious if they do not read Sahih al-Bari, Sharh al-Sahih al-Bukhari Min Imam Ibn Hajr al-Azqalani Ibn Khaldun, before Ibn Hajr, he wrote that no commentator has given the right, the due right to Sahih al-Bukhari But if you came back and happened to see what Ibn Hajr did he would say Ibn Hajar really indeed gave Al Bukhari his due rights. Ibn Hajar in Fatih he mentions that the Prophet actually died on the second of Rabi' al Awal. And he said this is the most correct of opinions. And those narrations which say, he said they make a mistake. They saw Thani Shahri Rabi'i Lil Awal Fasuhivat Ila Thani Ashara Rabi'i Lil Awal. They make a mistake because Ashara and Shahar has some similarity. Let us go to the biggest book of Sirah. The biggest book of, of Sirah. Al Rawd al Kunf, Lil Imam al Suhaili. You know, the most important book of Sirah, or the first one whom we know about writing, that he's writing about Sirah is Ibn Ishaq. And after Ibn Ishaq, Ibn Hisham came and summarized his work. Al Suhaili, when he came, he took this work. And he made the commentary that it is the biggest and the most important book of Sirah. <coughs> In this book, he demonstrates that it's impossible for the Prophet وسلم, to die والسلام, on the 12th of Rabi'a and Awal. Why? He said, because. Though so all the scholars in the entire Ummah agree upon the fact that the Yawm Arafah of Hajjat al Wada occurred on, on Friday, no two Muslims, no two Muslims, no two Arab scholars, no two people disagree upon that. And he says if the 9th of Dhul Hijjah, which is the day of Arafah, was Friday, then the beginning of Dhul Hijjah was Thursday. And if the month is Thursday, it begins on Thursday. If the month is 29, the next month will begin on Friday. 
If it is Thursday, then next month we will begin on Saturday. And he says, if the next month, which is Ramadan, <coughs> begins on Saturday or on Friday, the next month's will of uh, Safar, which is the month of Safar, will begin in either Saturday or Sunday. And the next month, which is Rabi al Awwal, the month, the very month in which the Prophet died, because the Prophet passed the very three months after Hajjat al Wada. So if the month of Safar starts on Saturday or Sunday, the month of Rabi al Awwal will either start on Sunday or Monday. And if Rabi al Awwal the month during which Zaydna Rasulullah so past started on, begins on, the, on, on, on Monday or on Wednesday, there is no way the 12th of that month to be fallen on on Monday. If the month starts on Sunday, then what Ibn Hajar said and what Ibn Sa'd said that the most correct opinion is the second, which is Monday. Because the entire Ummah agree also that the Prophet Zaydna died on Monday. So there is no way Monday could be the 12th of that month. But my point is not to celebrate or not to celebrate. My point is that we need to know the Prophet ﷺ in order to love him. So whenever we have an occasion, whether this month or another month, we need to talk about him Because the more we talk about him, the more we know him. And the more we know him, the more we love him. Because the Prophet Allah chose him from the chosen, from the chosen. In every single area. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qad naraka hina taqumu wa taqallubaka fis sajideen. That means Allah chooses even the lineage of Rasulullah. Sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. And the most documented person in the entire history of humanity is Sayyidina Rasulullah. So we know all his <coughs> grandparents up to Adam. But there is a hadith which is a weak hadith in which the Prophet said when we talk about his lineage, we should stop at Adana. Some say that this very Amr that we should stop at Adinan comes from Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. His lineage, Sayyidina Muhammad ibn Abdullah ibn Shiba, who was Abdul Muttalib, ibn Hashim, who was Muhammad ibn Mughira, who was Muhammad ibn Abdul Manaf, who was Muhammad ibn Mughira, ibn Qusay, ibn Kilab, ibn Murrah, ibn Ka'ad, ibn Luwai, ibn Ghalib, ibn Zahir, ibn Malik, ibn Nabat, ibn Kinani. Ibn Khuzayman, Ibn Mudrikat, Ibn Ilyas, Ibn Mulab, Ibn Izaab, Ibn Ma'ad, Ibn Adnan. And if you take his master's side also, you will go back to Adnan. Sayyid Ibn Aminah, Ibn Duwah, Ibn Abdi Manam, Ibn Zuhrat, Ibn Khusay, Ibn Kilab, Ibn Adnan. He was born without any doubt on his mouth. What day that is called? The most famous day is the Rabi' the 12th from these beautiful parents. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took his father before he came to be born. And his mother, a few years after his birth, some say six, some scholars say four. His grandfather, who loved him like extraordinarily, passed away when he was eight. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took care of him. He is the one who took care of Sayyidina Rasulullah But Allah also is telling us here, showing us here Love of Allah towards the servants Has nothing to do but what we measure love Having your parents, having your parents, all of those are good But that's not the thing Because all these beautiful parents did not see their beautiful child grow he was with his uncle Abu Talib who loved him, who even made, made some amdah about him. The Sahaba, they used to make amdah 
when he saw Medina and he praised the Medina, he loved the Medina. That's why Imam Malik, according to Imam Malik, Medina is better than Mecca. Because he said, it is because of Ibrahim, Mecca becomes a haram, sacred. And the Prophet says, I have made Medina sacred as Ibrahim made Mecca haram. And he said, without any doubt, Ibrahim, Muhammad Sayyidina Rasulullah is better than Ibrahim. That's the view of opinion of Sayyidina Imam Malik. The Prophet saw so Medina and praised the Medina. And Sayyidina Anas, um, Sayyidina Abbas, his uncle, asked him, Can I praise you? He said, Yes, go ahead. La yukafid lahu haq. He said, When he made this dua for Abbas, Abbas, even being very old, he never lost a tear of a tooth because of the dua of the Prophet. He praised him. He said, Before Medina, the Prophet great, beautiful. Pure Medina is. He said, You are pure away from Medina. Min qabliha tikta fi vilani wa di mustawda in haizu yusabul waraku. Zumma habat al bilad la basharun. Anta wala mutmatun wala alaku. Bal nutfatan tarkabus sadina wa kat al jamanatran wa ada ul garaku. Waratana al khalili mutatamil. Tajulu viha. Fakay fatah tariku. Tun kadu min salim in ila rahimin. إذا مضى علم فلا طبق حتى احتوى بيتك المهيمن من كل معنيات تحت هلتك وأنت لما ولدت أشرقت الأرض وضاعت بنورك لبق فنحن بذلك الضياء وبالنور إلى صد الرشاد المنطلق صلى الله عليه وسلم. His uncle Abu Talib who raised him praised him وأبيض يصفى الغمام بوجهه ثمان اليتامى عزمة للرامني he said, if anyone from Banu Hashim or Christ suffers, that means you are not alone. That's how he was even before he became a prophet of Allah. And that's how he continued to be even a way better. That's why you see Hassan ibn Habib praising him. يلوح من المصباح الدجى المتوقد فمن كان أو من لا يكون كأحمد نظاما لحق أو نكالا لملحد أغر عليه في النبوة خاتم من الله مرهاد يضوح ويشهد وضم إلى اسم النبي إلى اسمه إذا قال في الخمس المؤذن أشهد وشق له من اسمه ليجله فذو العرش محمود وهذا محمود صلى الله عليه وسلم في الكعب ابن زهير بن أبي سليمان هم تخديمه الناقة للماء محتجرا بالبرد كالبذر جل ليلة الظلم وفي عطافه أو أثناء فردته ما يعلم الله من خير ومن كرم. This is the love of the Sahaba for Rasulullah. عليه الصلاة والسلام. They love them more than anything else. More than their own selves. As stated in the hadith of Sayyidina Abu Bakr. As you can see in the life of Sayyidina Abu Bakr. He couldn't live after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam except two years and so. He could not finish a sentence after the passing of Rasulullah when he was talking about the Prophet He would cry on the minbar, Sayyidina Abu Bakr. And the Sahaba cry in the masjid. And Umahat women cry in their houses. And the entire Medina cry. Likewise, Sayyidina Abu Bakr. One of the Sahaba, when he heard the Prophet passed, he made dua that Allah should take his, his eye because he doesn't want to see anyone after the Prophet Another one asked Allah to take his life because the Prophet died. Zayd ibn Dathanna was being punished by Quraysh. They asked him, if you agree that we put Muhammad on your place, we let you go. He said, no, I wouldn't be happy if I was in my house, safe, and a shoka and a throne is hurting Rasulullah. Sallallahu To that, Abu Sufyan, who was a Muslim yet, commented. He said, oh Allah, ma ra'aytu ahadan, yuhibbu ahadan, ka hubbi ashabi Muhammadin Muhammadan. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wallahi, I have never seen anyone loving anyone the way the Sahaba of Muhammad loved Muhammad. Alayhi salatu wa sallam. He was with his uncle until he got married. Khadija, the first and the most and the best among all the women of the Prophet from whom Sayyidina Rasulullah has all his children except Ibrahim. 
when he was 25. From Khadija comes Zainab. Some say Zainab is the oldest, some say Qasim is the oldest. Zainab, Rokhi, Mukulthu, Fatim. People, scholars disagree who's old. No, we don't have time here to disagree. Zainab is the oldest. Who would be later on married to Abu Aas? And from Abu Aas, she will have two children Ali and Umama. Ali is the one whom the Prophet Sallallahu had with him when he was going to Makkah. And Umama is the one whom the Prophet Sallallahu had with when he was praying Subh, some narration say, uh, some narration say, Asr. He carried her out of love when he was praying to Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Sayyidina Umama, after the death of Sayyidina Fatima, married to Sayyidina Ali, because Fatima was in that. And when Ali passed, he told Mughira to marry Umama. Some say, no, Abu Hiyad married Ali, Umama. But she didn't have children. Some say she had one from Ali and Muhammad al -Awsat. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't have any great-grandchildren from Zainab. Ruqayya and Umu Kulthum, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, married them to the two children of Abu Lahab, his uncle. But when the case of Abu Lahab comes, he asked them to divorce. The two daughters of Sayyidina Rasulullah They just married them, they didn't even go to them yet. They didn't consume the marriage yet. Udba was married to Ruqayya, he divorced. Utayba was married to Umm Kulthum. Not only did he divorce her, he went to the Prophet and cursed the Prophet and tore the garment of Sayyidina Rasulullah and the Prophet made dua against him. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam And they traveled to Sham, the lion came and ate him. And he said, Muhammad is killing me while he's in Mecca, I'm here in Sham. That was Rasulullah then Sayyidina Rasulullah married Ruqayya to Sayyidina Uthman. They had a child, Abdullah, who died when he was six after the death of her mother, of his mother, who died in Medina right after Badr. Then afterwards, Sayyidina Rasulullah gave Umm Kulthum to Sayyidina Uthman. And Umm Kulthum will die the year 8 of the Hijrah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also had Fatima who would be married to Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib. <coughs> From Sayyidina Ali, Fatima will have or Fatima will give Sayyidina Ali five children. Some say six. Hassan, Hussein, Muhassid, three boys and two girls. Zainab and Umm Kulthum. Ali wanted to marry all his children to the children of his brother Ja'bar, but Umm Kulthum he married her to Sayyidina Umar al Khattab, and they had two children, Ruqay and Awad. The Prophet Islam's boys, none of them survived, none of them lived. Actually, all his children died before his death, Sayyidina Rasulullah, Sallallahu except Fatima, who died six months after him. One of our scholars say that, look at what the Prophet Islam went through. He went through all this. He lost his father, his father before he was born. His mother, a <coughs> few years after he was born. His grandfather when he was eight. He lost his wife after 25 of marriage. 25 years of marriage. His wife and the most loving uncle. The very same week, Abu Talib. He lost all his children, except for Hatim. He will lose another wife, Zainab bin Khuzaymah, because of the Prophet married Saudat or Aisha to ride after the, I mean after the death of Sayyidina uh, Khadija. Some scholars say Aisha, but he consumed, he didn't, Aisha didn't live, didn't leave to the Prophet house until they migrated because she was young. And Saudat bin Khuzaymah. In Medina, the Prophet will marry Hafsa. Daughter of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu ta'ala anha and Zainab bin Khuzayman who will die during the lifetime of the Prophet. 
And Raihana, for those who say Raihana was his wife, but the most authentic opinion is that the Prophet had 12, uh, 11 and two of them died during his lifetime. And he only left Sauda two, Aisha two, Hafsa two, Ummu Salamata, uh, Zainab bint Jahsh, uh, Sophia bint Hayyan, and Maimuna bint Harith. These are the, and, and Juwaria, these are the wives of the Prophet Ali, Salatu Wassalam. He went through all this. And when Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala told him, Ya Qur'an, this is the Rabbi God, he knew the heaviness of the message. He told him to hide for three years. He asked him to go out and pronounce the message. They hurt him, they harmed him, hurt and harmed his Sahaba. He ordered them to go to Habashuk twice. They, the Quraysh, I mean, made the hisar against him for three years. And his uncle and wife didn't survive. After that, he went to Dubai. They kicked him out. And Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala took him to Israel and Mi'raj and showed him in the Israel and Mi'raj the very way, the very rest of his life, how he's going to live it. We don't have time to go through it. And after that, the Prophet Sallallahu migrated to Medina, hoping that things would get better. He found there 25 tribes of Yahud, most of whom were against him. And the Munafiq وَعَلَىٰ رَأْسِهِمْ عَبْدِ اللَّهِ إِبْنُ بَيْهِ مِسْرِ And Quraysh and the other Arabs fighting against him for the next 10 years. He went through all this until Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala opened up for him in Fatih al-Makkah and in Hajjat al-Wada. But with all these problems, the scholar said, you will never look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam if that were for you to see. Except that he sees teeth beautiful tears, alayhi salatu Because he told us, al-mu'min kulluhu khayr. Ajaban li amri al-mu'mini, inna amra al-mu'mini kulluhu khayr. Amazed and amazing is the affair of the believer. For all his affair is, is good. If goodness comes, he thanks Allah and that is good. If otherwise comes, he is patient and that is good. But the Prophet ﷺ, even otherwise comes, he would thank Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. Not only will he be thanking Allah, but he will be pleased. We ask Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala to grant us the knowledge of the Prophet, and the knowledge of the Sahaba of the Prophet, and the knowledge of this deen that was brought to us from Allah by the Prophet ﷺ, and the true obedience of Rasulullah. May Allah grant us the true obeying lifestyle of a true, the lifetime of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. May Allah make it easy for all of us. May Allah make it easy for all of us to follow his footsteps in all our lifetime. Hada wa sallallahu ala sallallahu alayhi wa muhammad wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Very quickly, I would like to um, convey the salam of the Muslims from Saddam Island, New York, to you from Masjid al Mahajiri, which we have established um, since <coughs> 2010. Now the community, alhamdulillah, is expanding. And I always say that we are called the forgotten world. Saturn Island, which is the fifth borough of New York. But it's not as busy as the other boroughs. And I believe that all boroughs or all cities, wherever there is a masjid or a community center for Muslims, we don't expect anyone to help after Allah but the Muslims. Because Allah says, Inna ya'muru masajid manamana billah. Only those who believe in Allah will take care of the masajid of Allah. If we love Allah more than ourselves, <coughs> which is what is normal, because the Prophet says, one of the signs 
often that, that the person has tested the sweetness of Iman is the fact that Allah and His Messenger are more beloved to him than anyone or anything else. And yakuna Allah wa Rasulu wa Ahabba ilayhi mimma siwa. And Allah, whenever he mentions the masjid, he put his name right after it. So if we love Allah more than ourselves, we're supposed to love the houses of Allah more than our houses. إِنَّمَا يَعْمُرُوا مَسَاجِدًا مَسَاجِدَ Allah. وَمَنْ أَغْلَمُ مِمَّنْ مَنَعَ مَسَاجِدَ Allah. فَلْيَعْبُرُوا رَبَّ هَذَا الْبَيْتِ وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدَ لِلَّهِ فِي بُيُوتٍ أَذِنَ اللَّهُ أَنْ تُرْبَعَ وَيُذْكَرَ بِهَا اسْمُهُ يُصَبِّحُ لَهُ بِهَا بِالْقُدُوِ وَلَا صَعْلِ رِجَالٍ لَا تُلْهِهِمْ تِجَارَةٌ وَلَا بَيْعٌ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ عَنْ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَإِقَامِ الصَّلَاةِ وَإِيتَاءِ زَكَاةِ يَخَافُ يَوْمًا تَتَقَلَّبُ بِهِ الْقُلُوبُ وَالْأَبْصَارُ فَإِنْشَاءَ اللَّهُ فِي الْخُطْبَةِ وَمِنْ الْإِخْبَارِ 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 الْإِ it's not like here, but even here, we need you, Muslims. May Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala make Muslims good for Islam. May Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala grant Muslims peace and justice wherever they are. May Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala make it easy for them to resist against the wrongdoings of their enemies. And may Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala make it easy to overcome and kick out enemies of Islam wherever they occupy. Either we know or we don't know from among the Muslim lands. Allahumma arina al-haqqa haqqan wa tukna tiba'a wa arina al-batila batila wa tukna tinaba. Allahumma ajal al-Qur'an lana fi dunya qarina wa fi al-qabri muqnisa wa fi al-qiyamati shafi'a wa ala al-sirati nura wa ila jannati rafiqa wa baynana wa bayna al-nari sifat wa hijaba wa ila al-khayrati kulliha dalila وإماما لبطيك وجودك وكرمك يا أكرم الأكرمين اللهم اجعل اجتماعنا هذا اجتماعا مرحوما واجعل تفرقنا من بعده تفرقا معصوما ولا تجعل بنا ولا معنا شقيا ولا محروما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم بالعالمين إنك حميد مجيد وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما بارك على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم بالعالمين إنك حميد مجيد اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمي الذي تنحل به العقد وتنبرج به الكرم وتقضى به الحوائج وتنال به الرغائب وحصل الخواتيم ويستسقى الغمام بوجه الكريم وعلى آله وصحبه في كل لمحة ونفس بعدد كل معلوم لك حق قدره وبقداره العظيم وأقيم الصلاة يرحمني ويرحمكم الله الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله